Okay, good morning, everybody, uh, and welcome to the Highway Parks and Recreation Committee meeting, which we're going to get started here. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes? I will motion. Any second? Second. Second. Okay, great. Uh, so motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motions are approved. Thanks, everybody. Uh, all right, we're going to move on to the highway and parks portion. Ray, take it away. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, number one is the water breaks, uh, zero water breaks on town roads for the month of uh, March. So the no bill is attached. Um, number two is the yard waste random pickup started April 6th. Um, we did get out a little earlier. We went out on Wednesday of the week prior um, to get the trucks out. Since they've been parked all winter long, uh, we were able to get out and get the heavy stuff picked up. Um, a lot of the stuff from fall and stuff that was left over. So it was uh, well worth getting out a little early on that. Um, number three is the speed signs. Uh, the traffic logic sign that we ordered uh, was delivered to the highway. Uh, the deep cell batteries are on charge. Um, the software and all of the uh, paperwork was given to the police department so that they can uh, uh, do their part of setting up the sign uh, when we get it up. Um, we did call location in for a sign pole for it to be installed. Um, we're hoping if the locations come in, we can get that set up next week. Mm -hmm. um, the chief had asked that we uh, install the sign on Windsor Drive. I know initially we said Lexington Parkway. Uh, the new location will be on Windsor Drive between St. Anne and Fox Hollow. So you should see that up in the near future. Yeah, that's a that's a hot spot for sure. Great. Is it going to be facing uh, going down Windsor towards uh, that's a uh, Bar Ridge or going up towards not going down to uh, from Van Antwerp heading down towards uh, Fox Hollow right now. So we hope to get that up as soon as locations come in and we can put the sign pole in. Uh, that'd probably be sometime next week. Hey, Ray. Yes. Um, does that sign do traffic counts too? Um, yes, it does. So after that period of time of it being up, could we get some of that data for the planning board to look at? I think if you... All, all the data and all the any information collected off the sign, I'm sure you can coordinate with the uh, police chief on that. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Highway Highway doesn't have anything to do with the data. Okay. Uh, number four is the tentative paving schedule. We had a pretty aggressive list, I think, with everything that's going on right now. Um, we need to get through this time and uh, we'll reevaluate um, upon when things uh, try to get back to normal, whether we're going to take anything off the list or not. Um, I've worked with Matt's crews, uh, kind of relaying information to continue to do evaluation of uh, manholes that need to be rebuilt and uh, just a, a general count of manholes and infrastructures and valves so right now uh with the times we're working in they're collecting data without actually doing any work yet until we can make a definitive decision as to uh what kind of time is going to be uh left to do all this so uh that's where we're at with that everybody good with that 
Yeah, right. Uh, so you, when would you normally be getting started on even just some prep work? Prep work would be starting sometime towards the middle of April. Um, middle to end, weather depending. Um, you know, the, the list has been being worked on since January as far as collectively doing the list, uh, doing the budget part of it, um, and all that has been going on since January. So um, behind the scenes part of it is normally from January till now, uh, measurements, uh, all that stuff. So, you know, I think it'll have a little damper on it, but we really, the uncertainty of uh, what's going on will uh, ultimately uh, make the final decision on uh, when things are up and running. Yeah, we want to be safe and cautious. Uh, so just, you know, again, keep, keep us posted. We'll have more information. I imagine the next time we meet in May, we'll have a better handle of where things are. Yeah. Hey, Ray, did you get, uh, um, Alexis and I compared the paving schedule to the ADA transition plan and the complete street uh, map. Did you have any thoughts on that email that we sent? Or, I mean, I know everything's changed, but did you get a chance to look at that? Yeah, Laura, Alexis. we met, Ray, Lori, and I mean, not Lori, Ray, Rosemary, and I met following that email and we, you know, went through the suggestions and, uh, you know, Ray always goes above and beyond. I didn't realize he always was fixing the curb cuts when he was paving anyways. But um, I think we came to a consensus that the best place to start and focus on are the curb ramps and the, the sidewalk uh, right abutting um, hillside since we're doing paving on the three streets leading there. So I think that's the first start and then we'll evaluate as we go. Um, and I think that fully complies with you know our, our priorities and our representations made in the ADA transition plan. But we'll keep you in the loop, Laura. Okay, I mean, I obviously don't need to come to every meeting. I'm already taking things over, sorry, Ray. But if you are having meetings like that, it would be helpful if I could be there anyway. Thank you. Yeah, no, no, it was not a formal meeting and more of a <coughs> covering a whole host of topics that would have uh, bored you to death, but it came up. So um, we can put it in writing maybe, but um, given the uncertainty of when it's going to start, I think that we'd be jumping the gun to like do anything right now. Um, before we go on to the next item, I should have taken care of this. It's harder to do online, but um, I want to just, Lori, you're taking notes. So I want to do quick attendance, um, make sure we didn't miss anybody. And it's, I can't identify all the numbers. So Obviously, I'm here. The supervisor's here. Um, I saw Brian. Backus is here. Ray Smith has checked in. Uh, Lori, obviously. Laura. Um, Alexis. Michelle Martinelli. Uh, I think Linda O'Brien is on, and so is Julie. Laura? Yeah. And is Pete, Rebecca on all, all as well? I can't tell. Not sure. So did I miss anyone? I'm here, Paul Briggs. Oh, Paul's on as well. Thanks. Good morning, Paul. Anybody else? Yes, yeah, Stan's here too. Okay, Stan. And Paul, are you Paul Sylvester? Are you in are you also with us, Paul Sylvesta? Thought I saw his name flash up. Yeah, he's listed. I think his mic is on mute. Okay. All right. Did I miss anyone else? Lori, did you get everybody? I did. Okay, great. All right, thanks everybody. Sorry to interrupt. Ray, you can uh, continue. Okay, number five, personal update. Uh, A is COVID-19 workforce restrictions. So my department is uh, right now at 50%, I think along with uh, the other departments that are working outside of town hall. So um, we have been able to, to stay working um, in a safe fashion. Social distancing is big. Um, separate vehicles for people to keep people safe. Uh, sanitizing has been a big thing in, a, in the department. Uh, cleaning the trucks in the morning before we leave. Cleaning the trucks in the afternoon before we leave. 
uh, PPEs have been supplied to all all the workforce. Um, and our current schedule is uh, one day on, one day off at 50%. Um, so we're able to um, accommodate uh, essential work. Um, we haven't engaged in elective work. Uh, so uh, we're always there in case of an emergency. Uh, we did have uh, the one snowstorm during this uh, times and uh, everybody reported to work, did their job uh, successfully. Um, and always safety is at hand. Great. How are people holding up? How's the mood, morale? Um, uh, people are, people are uh, cautious, but, um, uh, you know, happy to report to work. Um, I, I, I will say that I'm, I'm very proud of my staff being as cautious as they are, uh, over and above with, uh, courtesy to one another, social distancing being, uh, the primary, um, everybody's picking up, everybody's doing their part to, to go above and beyond to clean things, uh, wipe doorknobs, uh, you know, the courtesy has been unbelievable amongst them all themselves. Good to hear. Thanks. Thanks, Ray. And Ray, just one thing to add, you said everybody in your department's on every other day rotation except you. <laughs> so I think that's, mm -hmm. you've been there 24 seven, which is a good thing. And thank you for that. Um, yeah. One thing also that I think you didn't mention that we had discussed yesterday that I think is a good administrative control is that um, you have your crews working in you know no more than two at a time together for the most part, with the exception of yard waste, and so as to prevent exposure to the least amount of employees as possible. Is that accurate? Yes, um, it's we, we've been creative with parking a uh, support truck uh, in the neighborhoods so that. Uh, nobody has to ride together, um, you know, when they're working outside. Um, it's a little outside the norm for us because, uh, you know, most of the time we try to utilize less vehicles uh, to accomplish things. So this is a little outside our norm, but um, it's working and it's for the right purpose, I feel. Thanks, Ray. That's great. Thank you. Thanks for all you're doing. Um, we'll go to B. Um, I've elected to uh, not do any interviews or uh, bring anybody from the outside to our facility. As you know, our facility is close to the public for one. Uh, two, we really don't know uh, points of contact for people that we would be interviewing. Um, so we just find it best to be on hold at this time. Um, not even doing phone interviews or anything. Um, we still are getting applications in. Um, we currently have uh, one person out on comp still. Um, and uh, we have two vacancies due to retirement. Um, we had one in uh, February and we had one retire in, in March. So as of right now, I feel it best. Um, you know, obviously there'd be upgrades involved in this when to backfill. Um, but everything's on hold right now. I think with everything going on, it's best just to try to uh, do what we can uh, with what we have, and uh, we'll address it when uh, things change. Hey, one quick, quick question, right? So on that note, um, we just have discussed uh, the awarding a bid for temporary laborers, and I know when we just chatted, you said that, that that's on hold. Are we able to... Are we going to have to redo that bid process for when we're ready to take on temporary laborers? Or is it, you know, doesn't have an expiration date? No, that, that's for the year. That's for the year. And um, like I say, that falls under bringing strangers into a complex and, yeah. and working with our people. So I'm, that's also on hold. We're using our own people within. So we don't have to redo the bid. Like when we're ready to have the temporary laborers come like months from now, do we have to redo that bid process? No, or? we do not. Okay, thank nope, you. It's a phone call away. Uh, we've been in contact with the agency. Uh, they know, you know, with what's going on in the circumstances. Uh, they've 
reached out back to us and said, you know, they totally understand. And when they're needed, we make the phone call. So um, they're available to work whenever. Great. And we already have the resolution for that. So I'm just move yep. forward. Once okay. Thank you. Um, so we'll move on to number six, um, highway fuel station, uh, sharing fueling with, uh, water and sewer, uh, was a request from Paul. Um, I have had a brief discussion with Paul regarding this, um, that currently our software is, uh, obsolete at the highway. We have no way of, uh, uh, using the chips to get fuel or anything. We're basically on a padlock and handwriting down fuel consumption. It's not by any means perfect. Um, and, um, you know, when I, when I explained that to Paul, Paul understood that, you know, it's not the best situation. Our, our stuff has been outdated for a while and there's no software backup to correct it, even in a temporary basis. So, um, you know, it's not a, not a good scenario and, um, to do it at this time. I know Matt's been working forward on the, on the fuel station. So, um, we, we really would be, um, not really able to keep track of who's getting fuel at what time or anything like that at this present time. So Paul seemed to understand and, uh, you know, there may be other ways to look at the, the fuel shortage uh, charges that they're incurring at the uh, landfill site. Ray, can you hear me? Yes, I can. So, um, as you know, now you are experiencing short deliveries. So if there's any way Matt can participate in the manual system, I know it's a pain, but now we are both paying a surcharge for short deliveries and I, I don't know if you can work that out with your manual system that you've been doing um i don't know if it's a matter of more people coming to your pumps or what it is but i understand it's not it's not easy but yeah. um that's that's the only option is to use your manual system because so this could go on for months um i don't that's months away from um a station but and i asked him if he could piecemeal the software and and put it on your site but i guess that's not a possibility so unless a manual system could be used by everyone and eliminate your short loads uh deliveries we're just gonna have to pay the, the uh surcharge well i can that's certainly it. reach i can certainly reach out to the vendor and uh possibly space out my my uh my fills um they were they were pretty easy to work with when we went from the unleaded fuel to the regular fuel they were more than understanding and worked with us so uh i can definitely reach out to them and see if we can stretch out the the fills the fills and uh probably try to lessen right. that intake so i'll work on that that would help okay I'll do it. I'll see what I can do and I'll follow up with you. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Thank you. Um, number seven, uh, a resolution to purchase three pickup trucks for use by the highway um, in discussion with the committee. Uh, this is going to be put on hold. Uh, this was only put on there. Um, as since January, you know, these were the plans moving forward, obviously with the equipment that was bonded, uh, that was passed at the last board meeting. Um, this is money that's in the budget to do this, but um, once again, due to where we are um, as a group, we elected to uh, put this off for right now. Um, you know, you never know the, we may need the money to backfill due to this crisis somewhere else. So uh, we can get by with what we have for now. Um, if things do uh, end up straightening out and it can be something that can be done before the end of the year and it looks like it'll work, that's fine. If not, we can uh, 
you know, use the money to backfill something else and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll revisit it next year if, if times uh, elect to do that. So um, Ray took the lead on this and I uh, just want to thank him. Again, he was very thoughtful about it. And uh, as he noted, it was something that had been in the budget. Um, you know, this was something he had planned for since last year. So um, appreciate that. You know, I think uh, Alexis attacks the budget mod there. I don't know financially what happens with, you know, with the money. Um, but, uh, you know, right later on, um, if we're in a better place, obviously we'd like to proceed or, you know, or if we need it elsewhere, know that it's available. But uh, I'd like to thank Ray for taking the lead on this. So I can speak to the budget. Um, this was in the initial bonding proposal and pulled down as the vehicles fell under that 50,000 threshold. So the um, decision was to appropriate fund balance, which is what we did. So technically it wasn't in the adopted budget, but it was a modification to the budget. If we do not move forward and spend this um, money in 20, it would roll back into fund balance where it came from initially. That's all. Okay. Paul, do you think that the idea of holding off on the trucks right now due to the current crisis is the right move? I do, but I, I never, when I brought this up myself, um, I, it wasn't meant to be a permanent, but, um, you know, um, change, but a temporary, a two, three, two, three months, or at least when we have a better handle on where we are, uh, the highway fund isn't impacted the same as the general fund, um, but it is impacted. So we'll take, okay. another so look. We'll, we'll take another look at this, you know, in a few months then and see where we are. I mean, obviously if we can, if it's prudent, we'll move forward, you know, later in the year. Yep. Sounds good. Okay, so we'll move on to number eight. Uh, town park closure uh, due to COVID-19. Uh, town owned playgrounds, equipment, uh, pavilions, picnic tables, outdoor grills are all closed to the public. Basketball courts, tennis courts, baseball fields, softball fields, soccer fields, lacrosse, uh, volleyball courts remain open to the public for passive use only and, um, you know, advising people to uh, keep in mind the social distancing. Uh, the dog park is also closed for use by the public. Um, we had posted all of the parks with the, the flyer that was provided. Um, a lot of them have since been tore down. Um, I just made up a whole nother batch of them yesterday and we'll, uh, go out and repost a lot of things. Um, some parks are busier than others. Uh, you know, a lot of people out walking. Um, there has been notice of some violation of this order, um, but you can't be everywhere at once. So um, we will repost the ones that were tore down and uh, a little bit of vandalism over to Avon Crest. Um, the police have helped us out with that, um, gone over and, uh, you know, kind of asked people to move along. So um, I think we're doing what we can do. And uh, so, yeah, just to jump on, on that. So the reason why this came, I thought this was an important point to discuss is because um, Supervisor Syed made representations to the state when she got approval for her emergency order closing the parks that she would take steps towards isn't it? So, uh, you know, as we discussed yesterday, you know, there's a, we can find a middle ground between uh, having the police having to be there 24 seven in patrol and, you know, some type of compromise. And so I talked to Charlie Bergami last night and he had a good solution, at least for the Blotnick Park basketball courts, which I know the supervisor has gotten multiple, uh, you know, reports from residents saying that people are playing basketball, like, you know, violating social distance. I drove by last night, observed the same thing. 
So Charlie Bergami, he had a brilliant idea. At least I thought so. He said we could just put zip ties with like a piece of you know scrap material over the hoop itself so we don't have to remove the brim like they've done in Albany. And he said that we have the materials and it would be a zero cost, you know, fix and then maybe zip ties together. The, the, um, I think some people are using the, the playgrounds if we just want to make it abundantly clear, we could just do that. Um, I think that would be a good solution for Blotnik that isn't too intrusive or invasive. Do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, that'll be Charlie's next job next time he's in. Great idea. Yeah, I know. And then he also, I mean, our intermediate step is that we do have cameras uh, right now located at two. The other one on Avon Crest is under the pavilion. So uh, one potential way to curb, uh, you know, violations of the governor's executive order is to maybe just put up a sign of some nature that says, like, um, this this park is under um, you know, being recorded or some one of those signs because those have just psychological deterrent effects. We don't want to say you're being watched by the police or by the town because that's not necessarily true, but that it's being recorded. But um, studies have shown that just knowing that you potentially are being recorded has a huge deterrent effect. So that's just, there's just two uh, suggestions that I thought would alleviate the need to burden the police force and you know nobody we don't want our police going out and having to break up people who are just trying to get out of the house but we also need to comply with the government the governor's mandate so yeah and I'll, to add to that alexis sorry just to add to that a couple of days ago the governor did mention that he was <clears throat> upping the fines and putting municipalities in charge of enforcing this. He was up and fine for you know, violating social distancing rules by from 500 to 1,000. So I yeah. agree, you know, right, we can't be 24 seven, but we do have an obligation to do what we can. Yeah, and to make sure that obligation isn't further, or not burning, putting a bigger burden on our already restricted workforce. Um, with respect to the fines, Ray, I know you mentioned they had been ripped down uh, I think Supervisor Syed was looking into ordering. Was, you wouldn't imagine how the, the COVID-19 has, uh, the different businesses have really amped, one of them being uh, social distancing signs for the park. Uh, you can get them overnight shipment. And so Charlie was looking into that. Uh, so I think that there's a lot of steps we can take uh, in terms of the crowding of the bike path, which is understandable. Um, one kind of creative solution that New York City looks in, looked into. Um, and I think Schenectady is perhaps leaning towards, I don't know if we're at this step, is that uh, informing residents of places that they can walk other than just the bike path down at Lions Park, which tends to seem very crowded. Uh, Laura is on this call. I don't even know if this is feasible, but we could perhaps ask if people were able to walk at like the Harmon Grove roads that are just built and are empty. Just, some some places go as far as closing the street to make it so there's more places to walk. I don't think we're that metropolitan, but I mean, to the extent that we have identified concerns about the inability to actually social distance when there's a crowded parking lot, it's impossible. And we want to have places where people can go get some fresh air. Uh, with Potter Hill closed. What, what about Alexis? What about in the supervisor's report or suggest that people get out and walk in their neighborhoods and, and maybe let and walk the streets and lessen the, uh, try to lessen the burden of the bike path and the parks and such. Yeah, I think walking in the streets is fine. I think that people probably just are getting bored about going around in their circle. And I mean, with the crossings closed in Colony, now all, all walking the, uh, Lysha Kill is not yet open for the season. Uh, just was trying to get creative on an alternative location and thinking of roads that have yet to be developed that are completely finished. Uh, Laura, do I mean, do you think that would be feasible or, or a reasonable ask? I think Laura Robertson's on the spot. Yes, I mean, yeah, sorry. Um, I mean, it's possible. Um, I mean, just ask us a, you know, good they gesture. are still doing construction on that road, so I mean, yeah. if it's not quite the same as putting people on a bike path. I mean, there will be contractors and trucks going up and down that road um, because they are considered 
essentially emergency construction until they can bring the homes into a place where they are, like, free from people walking in and kind of... Yeah. Well, they're allowed to finish the framing and the windows and the roof. And they have to maintain social distancing. But there is two or three houses down there that are open to construction mm -hmm. right now. So that's just a thought. Anyway, you know. Oh, yeah. No, we can, we can talk about that the call. I just figure... Maybe it would be good good advertisement for them because it really is beautiful back there. There's all these really nice, very wide roads with trees. Yeah, it in, is very nice. The, um, oh, sorry. I, I was I was in. Just wanted to say really well, quickly yeah, about closing well, the parks. I was laughing really hard in the city of Schenectady because they closed their parks with crime scene do not cross tape. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> They just wrap the park with crime scene do not cross. I mean, it's pretty effective, and it's like probably a little more right. environmental than ordering an a metal sign that you're not going to use again. I just kind of a fan of the crime scene tape. Maybe we can check and see if we have crime scene tape that we can use. That's not a bad idea. I'll check on that. Okay. Anything else on this? I will also um, weave that into my daily message and just urge people to walk um, in their neighborhoods if they can to ease ease the amount of congestion on our um, on our trails and paths. Okay, sounds good. Um, I'm I up, think uh, that's it for my point here. Right, thanks, thanks, Ray. Um, I just welcome. have a quick question for Ray. Um, because of the parks being open for limited use only, is that going to impact uh, when the restrooms are open at places like Blatnick and River Road? Most definitely. Yeah, we're, we're not going to move forward with that until um, <laughs> at least uh, social distancing is done away. We, we, we're trying to detour people, not bring people. So exactly. Um, my take is that we leave that alone until, because with the open bathrooms comes having to clean up and, and all yeah. that. So I, I would suggest that we leave that be. Okay, good. I just, I usually start getting a lot of calls around this time of year. So I just wanted to know uh, where we stood. So I know what to tell people. Yeah, I would, I, I would go with that. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Um, I just wanted to note before we switch over to um, the remainder of the agenda, when we're on parks. I think uh, Ray didn't mention this during the personnel update, but just wanted to confirm. So we we aren't doing like normal uh, like cutting of, of our park, like maintenance of the parks themselves. That there is somebody who's going to check on them, you know, every day just to make sure there's not trash accumulation or vandalism, but. Um, just so we, you can explain, everybody else can hear your parks, the six parks um, employees, they're working uh, in high rate, highway functions right now. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Um, but we do have somebody monitor, uh, either myself or one of the crew leaders uh, drive through, uh, you know, to try to identify vandalism or anything that might need to be addressed or safety hazards. So um, they are being monitored. Um, we haven't done any enforcement within um, when we see people. Um, so they're basically just monitoring. Great. Okay, uh, the next item is item 10, uh, lock seven update. Just very briefly, the Canal Corp has suspended the work for now, given all that's going on. So I just wanted to report on that. Ray, you know, I know we were in connection with that, gonna do some paving. So obviously that's also gonna be on hold, waiting for uh, that to begin again, correct? Uh, yes, that, uh, you know, once again, that all falls under when things start to open up and we can get a grasp on it. But uh, at this point, uh, everything's on the table. So, um, you know, when they, I'm sure there'll be a little pushback and, uh, you know, we'll just follow that lead. It, it's still on the table to do. 
Okay. Thanks. Um, tree Council. Um, before I hand it over to uh, to Laura, I, I um, got a copy of a letter. Um, you know, noting that the Arbor Day Foundation had written to congratulate Niskin on earning recognition as a 2019 Tree City USA. Just wanted to note that it's not on the agenda, but just wanted to say that and congratulate congratulations, Niskina. Congratulations, Laura, for leading that effort. Um, and so then I'll I'll turn it over to you now, Laura. Okay, thanks. I do the paperwork, but Ray's really the reason that we're a tree city because his guys plant all the trees. <laughs> well, thanks, Ray, too. Thank you, Ray. <laughs> um, all the work and you get so, all the work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. He does all the work. So um, the Arbor Day, we were thinking and, um, is that we could do take home tree kits. So um, drive through Arbor Day, like, uh, we can, we order a bunch of trees, we can wrap them up with some take home, um, activities so that families, you know, I know like are looking for things to do at home. Um, so we can make these, you know, clean, sanitized little packets of Arbor Day tree plus activities that they can take home. And I think we'll meet social distance requiring because they'll just stay in their cars. So we can just, um, the tree council, whoever can just hand them up to people as they're driving through the town hall circle. We ordered, I think, 205 trees, and we'll put the packets together. Um, and I guess my question was for you, Ray, um, if we're trying to keep our crew socially distant, uh, but we still do need to plant a tree for Arbor Day, like, do we want to just get a really small one so that it can be a single person kind of tree planting deal? Uh, we can accomplish that with, with social distancing. We can do the normal uh, tree. Oh, we can? Um, okay. We can, have, have we can, we can dig the hole. Of, and, go ahead. Oh, have any of the trees that we ordered in the fall come in yet? I haven't heard anything of it. Uh, we actually, uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, planted, I, I want to say Mike's done seven or nine trees off the list from last year. Um, so um, he's been buying stock over to Northern. Uh, they're starting to get their stock in, not fully stocked, but we, we have planted, I think, nine trees so far off of last year's list. That's great. Thank you. Um, and so, I didn't and tell you because we, we need our distance. Yeah, I know. You need your distance from me anyway. <laughs> um, well, so, that in your home. So. <laughs> the, um, the other thing I was thinking uh, is, so we have the Arbor Day proclamation scheduled for the town board meeting, um, but theoretically we could live stream and then put on our website, like reading the Arbor Day proclamation and going over, you know, the trees that we're handing out for Arbor Day and just, maybe giving some some people in town something fun to watch. And um, we could do that while you guys were planting the tree, if, like, you know, that's okay with everyone. How long is the proclamation going to be? Well, is it as long as it is? It's not very long. It's just actually as part of the tree city, you, you have to do the proclamation for Arbor Day and you plant a tree. And then, I mean, you don't have to give the trees away, but we like to. And I'm just saying, um, so, like, Lily's, Lily loves to go to those like paint your art places and right now they do take home art kits So you just get the canvas and the paints and just you know paint brushes and enough to just do the the thing at home And it works really good uh, This is just kind of the same idea you would pick up your Arbor Day tree with some activities and then go home and plant it I'm sure you could put up some temporary tables and space them out have one uh, person from the tree council at each table and uh, you know, as long as you got PPEs, there ain't no reason why um, something can't be set up where people can pull up and you can hand them a tree. Yeah, that's what we're I thinking. I don't see where. I think it can be done safely and in a reasonable manner. I think you just need to get the word out there of what you're doing. That's good, um, Ray. Do you think maybe offline we could just see what? Trees, what, it made sense to me to plant one of the ones that we ordered last 
fall what they have in and see what we can plant at town hall send me a, send me that list Laura I know you bought some some special ones and yeah, I'll uh, ones. make a phone call over there huh okay yeah the special ones that's what I was thinking that sounds great I'll send you the list yeah send me the list and I'll, I'll have Mike make a call over there and see if the, any of them came in okay thank you you're welcome Laura did you have anything else on complete streets uh, no, we haven't had a complete streets meeting in months. I think we will try again for the end of the month. Um, they just real quick wanted to, you know, just reach back up to the school schools about adding some bike and um, pedestrian amenities for the roof configuration. And um, they were going to plan another kind of like Dexter Dash um, bike event. But I think with everything going on, it's obviously extremely difficult to do that remotely. <laughs> you can do take-home tree kits, but I don't know about take-home complete tree kits. So um, we put that on hold for a little while. We'll see what happens. Like maybe we could do something for going back to school or fall or something like that. And then um, yeah, just supporting whatever the town needs, looking at planning board projects. We have a lot of them. So. Okay, great. Yeah, thanks, Laura. Uh, all right, recreation programs, Lori. All right, um, as far as the um, personnel update for community programs, uh, myself, Lisa, and Julie have all been working from home. I've been going in periodically to do things that um, cannot be done from my desktop at home, like invoices and checking the mail and what have you. But we've all been doing our best to get all of our work done, um, but yet be safe at the same time. And as far as the senior center, I'm going to have um, Linda address that when she speaks because she knows better how um, they've been working at the center. Um, as far as spring soccer, unfortunately, we had to cancel it. We waited until the very last moment, but there was nothing we can do. Julie is processing all of the refunds now. Um, it, it stinks, but it had to be done as well as the Easter parade. We had to cancel as well. I did try to think of solutions, um, like having people drive up and pick up things like little baskets at, or little bags at town hall, but I knew it would be a burden on the police force because the line would be huge. So I kind of put that on the back burner and I didn't think it was feasible for this year. Um, the summer program book. Hey, Lori. Yes. Not, not to cut you off, just out of curiosity. Do, so in the budget, how much do we budget for like the Easter parade? Like, is that something that we could use that, you know, I know we do the ho Halloween parade. Maybe we could find a holiday in between now and then to make up for it. Yeah. It's thinking, not a lot. It's just candy and um, miscellaneous supplies. I want to say at most it's like $150. Okay. It's a small budget, but it we're able to stretch it and it goes a long way. Well, maybe we could think of something else to do when, you know. Yeah, I was thinking of possibly maybe a ice cream social or something to kind of, once we're all back and able to go outside to get everybody together with a balloon twisting person and just to have something that's fun and not a huge budget, but enough to get everybody back out and make up for the fact that we couldn't have the bunny parade, which is very sad. <laughs> One of my favorite days of the year is running around as the bunny, but <laughs> I, guess my so come, I have a bunch of other options. So I was thinking of like how after like, you know, World War One and World War Two, they had like the big welcome home parades where, you know, the whole community came together. But it doesn't seem like we'd be able to do that with $150 after the COVID. No, I know. Sorry. <laughs> we'll come up with something. We'll, we'll be creative. <laughs> um, and as far as the summer program book, we have it done. But obviously, it's very fluid because a lot of programs are being uh, moved or canceled. So I didn't want to release it and have to constantly be making edits or take registrations and then have to refund them. So we're waiting till we have a better idea of when this mess will be over and we can resume. And um, at that point, registration will be open and the book will be released. Um, let's see. Um, Town pool safety plan. I've been working on that in hopes that 
the pool will be open. It's due 30 days prior to um, the opening of the pool, which is hopefully Saturday, June 20th, which is the Saturday before Father's Day. We're looking for hopefully June 8th through the 12th for the inspection. But as with everything else, this is all up in the air. So it's kind of like a wish. And we're hoping we're um, back to normal by then. But that, you know, there's nothing really much we can do about that. Um, and as far as the NISC Unit Community Foundation grant, um, our program for the community programs, Lisa's been working um, on the grant. The 14th was the deadline, which was extended, but we're using that day um, in hopes that maybe everything will be lifted and we can kind of move forward after that. And we know we're going to be busy. Um, we're looking for a blow up screen and projector that we could use for outdoor movies at town hall and um, possibly the town pool for evening swims. So we've borrowed one um, in the past from the county and it worked great, but I'd like to have our own so we can have movies whenever we want. And as far as the senior um, programs, um, they're looking to expand their outdoor recreation area by including six park benches, like the ones we used in the dog park and a splash pad to keep everything consistent and reestablish the outdoor bocce court and also have raised half garden beds um, to make it easier for the seniors to plant so they don't have to crouch down on the ground. Um, so Lisa's diligently been working on those um, grants and we'll get them to Yasmeen as soon as she's finished for her signature so we can send them in. And as far as resolutions go, we have heard nothing, even though we've um, put an application on the website for the senior bus driver. Luckily, Bob has been a godsend, but this is not something he wants to do um, consistently or full time. He wants to do trips and he will fill in. So we're going to uh, blast it again in hopes that maybe we can get some movement on getting some applications that I can at least review um, so we can hit the ball, uh, hit the ground running when we're able to hire again. Have we advertised this elsewhere, like in paper or Indeed or, you know? We have not because in the past we've had no problem getting applications, but I think we're going to have to take the next step. So um, we'll start working on that. So at least get the ball rolling before um, we can actually do some hiring. And then as far as resolutions, I would love to appoint a bus driver, but it doesn't look like uh, this is going to be an option for this month. And the driving range employees that we had on hold from last month, do I have to speak on behalf of that again, or was that just on hold? I believe it was tabled. And so it would be on the April 30th meeting, I believe the proper procedure would be a motion to table. I mean, we'd take it from the table, and then we would make a motion to amend to remove the soccer refs. Got it. Okay. And then I'm hoping to add, but then I'll add a few more um, employees. But as far as the driving range, we don't know when that's going to open either. It's a park mm -hmm. and everything's up in the air. Right. The usual date is like, Mar is it May, early May? It's usually like, it was going to be May 2nd was going to be the opening day. And then we had um, golf lessons, which were starting that Monday after. So they are also on hold. So that, And that's also in the program booklet, right? You've advertised that. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Okay. We'll get there. Lori, yes. Lori, it's Paul. Hi, um, Paul. I, I, I know um, the uh, Mr. Capen, who we reemployed, and uh, Mr. Bean was going to start at uh, in the just over twenty dollars. I think it's twenty point uh, sixty eight. But when the most recent advertisement went in, it went in to sixteen to eighteen dollars an hour, and that I don't think is adequate, and may account for why you had no responses. I agree. Yeah, we will correct that and put um, an updated figure in the next one. All right. Good. Thanks. Okay. And Bob Bean, I don't yeah, know if you know he. Always looking to spend more money, you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> We're flush. <laughs> yeah. No, you need to pay what you need to pay. You know. I know. I agree. Money. Okay. Totally agree. Laura, you were going to say something about the other Bob? 
Um, yeah, so Bob Bean, I don't know if Paul was aware, he backed out. So we didn't no longer have him as an option. So that's why we're back at square one. No, but as I, I said, I'm yeah, more. Bob Capen's been a gem. So we've been very fortunate to have him come back. Yeah. Yeah, he's been great. <clears throat> and also not knowing really exactly what's going to happen with the school district. There may be drivers that drive for the school. I mean, I know they say they're hoping to go back in the end of the month, but I guess you never know. Um, so we may get some drivers from the school district. So my hopes are high and um, we're just going to keep uh, advertising and hope we can get some applicants. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Linda, are you on for a Yes, I am. Can you guys hear me? Hi, everybody. Hi, Linda. Um, we can hear you. <laughs> so I just, um, we're um, well below 50% of staff working over there. Um, our kitchen staff, there's three people there who are, who are home. Uh, Edie is working from home, as is Lisa. And so Robin and I are the only two that enter the building. Um, we, when we shut down, it, it worked out time-wise. It worked out nicely because we were able to stop the grocery bill. So we didn't have any food waste, or not a lot of food waste anyways. Um, we have had to go through the kitchen and kind of, you know, clear out dairy and whatnot with expiration dates, but there hasn't been a lot of loss that way. Um, so we did at that time afterwards go through and we've completely disinfected both levels of the senior, the community center. So both floors have been done. The only people that go in and out are Robin and I, and we have had a request from Mike Howard from Ecos. Um, but we, what we did is we made him the point person for that department, that group. And, um, only he is allowed to go, come and go. And he has to let us know before he does so so that we can let Charlie know because, you know, they're, he's keeping an eye on the building. So, um, and he's, Mike Howard's been very, uh, easy to work with. He's been, uh, very agreeable. Um, so if you see anything else going on over there, it probably shouldn't be going on. Um, we, Robin and I, our office is set up so that we're automatically distant. So we're, you know, we're keeping up with, with all the protocol. Um, we, let's see, what else do we have? We have Edie working at home. So she's been focused on, our main concern is keeping contact with our seniors. Um, we have a list of about like over 130 that come in or that we make contact with on a regular basis. Um, and then we have maybe have that that come, that we see in and out of the the lower level for like meals and programs and, and uh, like lectures and such. Um, so we what we've done is we've kind of split it up. So Robin and I make those phone calls, the person to person contact. We try and do that once a week with the smaller group, and then with the larger group, we've uh, Edie's actually been making handmade postcards, and she's on her second round right now. And we've sent those out to our folks, and that has gone over huge. Um, they are very happy to hear us. And it's, as this time goes on, the longer it gets, the longer the conversations get, <laughs> which is really kind of cute. Um, it takes us longer to get through the list, but I think that just shows their appreciation for us checking in. So it's a good news story for the town. Um, that's, the fabulous. that's fabulous. <laughs> Really fabulous. And I read your read the newsletter yesterday about all the things oh that, my God. Yeah, they yeah, that, that's really yeah. just great. Just great Thank stuff. You are, the uh, Lisa gets a lot of the credit on that. She put that together. Um, and it's just it has some really, really interesting stuff in there. She tried to hit on programming, entertainment, education, exercise, and just general health and well being. And those are the things that so basically she tried to um, take what we do as a whole with our program and condense it into a newsletter format. And so she was, you know, and one of, one of the things that we've been doing, like we just, we've been sourcing. So, if, you know, you're, you're online and you're looking at what resources you have through email and whatnot. And then you're, you're kind of going through social media and whenever we see links or um, interesting resources there, we, we send them on to each other and we're just kind of like compiling as much as we can so that we can then turn it around and get it out to our seniors in some form or fashion. Usually that's either through our Facebook page or through uh, the email blast. And 
So Lisa will do an email blast and it will go out to everyone and it has the link embedded in it. And some of the things, is, I mean, you should really take a look at it because it's really cool. She has, she has a virtual um, tour so that you can literally, log, you can click on the link and you can go in and you can see the loop, the loop, like you were there. It's like you're walking through these museums or you're taking a side trip to Versailles. Uh, it's just really impressive. And then the, and there's a lot of these types of links out there. So you, but we're trying to be careful too, like what we're able to post, you know, with legally with copyright and whatnot. So, um, we, she also has a couple of links in there, uh, with free books. Um, some of them are, if they're populated with a lot of the classics, but if you drill down, there's, there's hundreds of books in there. And so people can pull those up if they, you know, don't want to go out. Because um, this is the senior population, so they're not as savvy as, as we are sometimes. So it's got to be a real obvious, simple click, you know. Yeah, there's um, there are dozens of links embedded in there. I, I just, I was so impressed. It was, oh, it was, it was amazing. It was great. Yeah, excellent. She oh. also did, um, we've been trying to uh, be mindful of the traditions. This, is a, this month is very heavy with a lot of um, uh you know, religious traditions and observances. So we've tried to in, uh, kind of send links there so people can kind of, you know, even if it's just uh, brushing up on, you know, the facts or the history or whatever, trivia, making it fun. Um, then there's also a mention of uh, where they can go to catch the live broadcast of services, which will be coming up this Sunday. So, and throughout the week, actually. So I um, noted the newsletter. I noted the newsletter started with a uh, John Adams quote. I love that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. that's like um, that's pure Lisa right there. She's really good. Um, she's our English major. You can tell. <laughs> so then we also have exercise, and we have uh, Mary Naples does exercise classes for us on a regular basis, and she's the bomb. And our seniors love her. Her class is huge, first of all. And so they, I think, you know, those who take it are, you know, you get a little pent up. You can only do so much walking in your neighborhood. So she's kindly gone on and she, she does these, uh, some of them are longer than others, but these, for the most part, they're short little videos. And we've been able to upload them to our, our Facebook page as well. And sometimes um, it's more like, you know, then it, everything from like breathing exercises to yoga to, to something more, you know, a little more physical. So we've also tried to connect the seniors to that as easily or as simply as possible. Um, so and that, and that really falls in Edie's um, belly with too. She's, she's doing, she's hand doing the, the front of the postcards and then we've kind of tried to streamline how to do the back of them. Um, she's, been uploading. She and Robin do a lot of the Facebook posts. Um, she's doing the exercise videos with Mary, and she's also um, she's our our resident, you know, optimist. She's just trying to keep feel good, trying to keep those connections with our senior population in the town, so that they they know we're still here. Because it feels like everything just went away. You know, the rugs been pulled out, and then like you, you don't see anybody, <laughs> you don't talk to anybody, and we're trying to make up for that. So. Um, Bob has been fantastic. He calls us, I mean, you can set your watch by it. Um, we're usually there, we're trying to keep our schedule as best we can, so because that's what our seniors know, so we go in, uh, we're there for Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. We try and run the groceries on Tuesdays and Thursdays unless we get some odd request or an emergency. We haven't had an emergency, um, so we've had a handful, a consistent handful of grocery runs each week, though. And we did get a, con we were, um, we are a contact, for New York Connect, they thought they had a transfusion patient that needed to um, get to their uh, their facility, and they uh, so they know that we're here for them. But it, it actually worked out that the that particular patient didn't need the the transportation. So, um, what else um, are we doing? Linda, um, Lisa Stevens, and I actually um, were at the county meal operation last week. Yeah. And, um, what's that? I saw your pictures. They were fantastic. Oh, yeah. yeah, and it was it was great. But um, we learned while we were there, there were only about they they estimated at least at, as of last week, there were only about thirty or forty Niskayuna uh, families that were receiving meals. Um, I wondered if any of them were any of our of our seniors. Uh, Lisa didn't seem to know have 
any of the seniors mentioned to you that they're taking advantage of that? They haven't mentioned, the ones that we're contacting haven't mentioned that, but um, I know, you know, we've had that number out in front of everybody, so they're very aware that the program exists. Okay. If there's a way for us to get those names and numbers, I don't know if they're allowed to share that, yeah. but we're happy to hit it from both sides if you want. Yeah, no, I don't know. I just wondered, you know, if they're not, you know, continue to feed that information. They're, they're you know, decent groceries that were um, distributed. So, you know, to the extent that or there's a need in our community, continue to communicate that. Um, yeah. Because they're, 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 they've got quite the operation going. And again, they was mentioned that there were already like 30 to 40 Again, as of last week, it could have grown. They're doing that hotline. As you know, the, the librarians are operating the hotline and they're taking the information. There's like a data entry and then there's the, you know, output, the, the, the bringing in of groceries, the, the, the packing of bags, and then the distribution by their um, highway and parks department, actually. The county highway parks department is doing that. So anyway, just continue. It's a, you know, it's an opportunity. If there's a need, people should know about it and um, should call and uh, take advantage of that. Okay, and then we'll one, do. one question. I think we're, oh. Go ahead. Oh, so, so you mentioned there's about 130 um, seniors who you're in contact with throughout the week. Yeah, if we're not, we're, like from the phone perspective, we probably, between Robin and I, we probably uh, get people on via phone, probably yeah. just half that number, but we are mailing the people can't all get to by you know through uh, phone contact. We have been mailing postcards to everybody. So, are those mostly um, residents who live in you know in residential homes or apartments, or are those residents also inclusive of residents who live at assisted living facilities within the town, like at Glenady or Ingersoll or Brookdale? Yeah, it's it's whoever contacts us to whatever we have in our membership list. So, and they're all over. Some of them are independent. Um, some of them are, you know, it could be Kingsway or Ingersoll. They're all over the place. Okay. So, yeah, and we are planning, the three of us, to go over this Friday to do what Rosemary and Lisa did last week. So, we, w I will um, keep my ears and eyes open there and see if there's anything else we can do to further help that along. Great. Okay. So um, some other things that we've had, some of the things that you, we forget about when we're in lockdown is um, we had to cancel and reschedule all of our um, our calendar activities for March and April. So we're, we're in the process of doing that, but as you know, it's slow going because a lot of people still don't even know what they're doing yet. So we are trying to um, kind of, we, we did have to populate and put together our May calendar. It's it's very pared down. It doesn't have uh, any exercise in it because that was the one thing that was difficult to schedule with the unknown. So uh, we will we put that out with a you know a disclaimer or a note that just said you know granted it is pared down at this point, but please keep checking back with us because obviously we're going to hit the ground running as soon as they give us the green light. So so that's out to the papers. Um, we continue to keep up with any other business deadlines. Uh, Robin wrote a grant for a summer trip that we have coming up for McHayden. Um, it was based on a conversation that we had with someone right before we went into lockdown back in March. Um, we are also starting up the exterior um, the seasonal prep. So, you know, there's stuff that we typically do with the buildings and the gardens and the sitting areas and whatnot. So we are happily getting out whenever we have a nice day to, to work on that. And um, Ray, I was, I don't know what the protocol is, but I was hoping that maybe we could talk to you offline just about a couple of things, nothing over the top for this year, certainly, but um, there's a couple of things that need some attention. And I think that's in your area of expertise. Yep, Did that's fine. You? you can reach okay. out to me any, anytime by phone or uh, whatever. I'll be happy to uh, compile a list. That's fine. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. So I think that's it, unless you guys have questions for us. No, thanks for all you're doing. It's really great. The outreach and the, the contact is really, the human contact is really important. And um, again, fabulous job. Thank you all again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 
Okay. Um, think uh, we're at Farmers Market Committee update. Uh, Supervisor, do you want to speak to this? Uh, sure. We're we're essentially on hold um, with the farmers market right now. Um, I have not received any additional applications. Um, we did have the one. I do know that um, some vendors remain interested, but of course, you know they're in the same boat as us. Uh, we don't know how long all of this is going to last. And so for them to try and make any kind of concrete plans, I think is they're, they're just not um, at that place yet. So we did have, I, I believe our um, deadline for submission has already passed. It was the end of March, but of course we're going to revise that. So hopefully we can get another farmer's market committee meeting um, on the books, either for later this month, which I think would be ideal or, um, you know, early May. Um, that that's essentially where we're at right now. Yeah, I don't think Libby responded to our last communication on this. Did she? I, at least not to me. Did she? she communicate? Didn't. No, I haven't heard from her. Yeah, so, so I we can try and get her again. Yeah, we should follow. We should follow up and try and get some, um, even if just a smaller version, just to touch base. Yeah. Um. All right, I, is the, I think that's it for the agenda items. I don't think we missed anything. Um, I, know, so I think about just the under the seniors, I'm brainstorming and working, and I'm going to talk offline with Linda about setting up some sort of uh, something that we could do for the residents who are at senior living facilities that have restricted visitors. Obviously, we could open up to, to you know more broadly to all seniors, but just from like a humanitarian perspective, not, not in my role at WD Town County, that's one that feels important. So anything that, you know, I can work with the senior center or the senior, you know, Linda and come up with some creative ideas. I thought maybe um, I'm working with a free developer who can, can essentially put together a resource hub for all volunteers in town who are willing and ready to help, but that, you know, need to be matched with a program that's in need. Um, I saw some creative ones like, you know, providing seniors at senior living facilities with, you know, sewing kits to make the cloth masks rep uh, recommended by the CDC. Um, another one was like a pen pal type program. Another one was a, like a senior telephone uh, companion. So I'm working right now on just seeing if we could technologically put together some type of hub um, that's in the works, but just wanted to bring that Great. up. Great. We, um, Keep in contact with a lot of the, because we do a lot of the information programs, like the lunch and learns and whatever. We um, we have contact at a lot of those different places, um, so that would be an easy thing to do. And we're happy to reach out to see what you know if we can fill in any gaps. Great, great. Uh, anything else? Um, any other items? Just for um, Linda's, just keep her up to date, Supervisor Syed and I have been working on getting quotes for before we open to the public. I know your staff has done an amazing job at you know cleaning and disinfecting, but we're going to be belt and suspenders and just across the board for all town buildings and facilities prior to opening to the public. I have a service that comes in that specializes in flu and virus disinfection, and so they'll like essentially spray everything uh, after hours. So. You know, to the extent your staff is planning on doing all the cleaning the day before it opened, um, we'll have that covered and we'll provide you with updates as soon as we have a dates and times. That would be awesome. Thank you very much. Yep. And it would also go for the senior bus if, to the extent I think that one should be done too. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, a um, couple of things. Um, I think this, this format's great. Um, and honestly, I'd love to see us continue even when we're back together. Um, it'd be nice to have the ability to continue to live stream meetings and, um, you know, post them now that we have a vehicle, a proven vehicle. So uh, with respect to our meetings going forward, whether we meet in May this way or otherwise, I'd like to continue to utilize, um, you know, so this, this, this format so folks can, um, again, so we can make sure there's a you know good tr transparency and participation by our community. Um, 
So, in, in, and also then the last item I think we need to take care of in, is setting that next meeting. Um, as Alexis mentioned, the next town board meeting is on April 30th. So um, I'm not sure what the schedule is thereafter. I, I imagine we're still on the May 11th and the May 25th schedule. So maybe May 6th for mm -hmm. our next committee meeting. And hopefully it can be at 8 a.m. in the Schaefer room. But if not, we'll meet this way again. Yes, Executive Order um, 202.13 was released last night from Governor Cuomo and extends essentially all executive orders through May 7th, except the one with the in-person restrictions. So if we think it's prudent to meet in person, since we're not subject to the workforce restrictions, we can do that. But otherwise, we're fully authorized to hold this conference you know, via video conference. Okay, so either way, we'll make that decision, but um, we'll do it in May 6th seems like the best date given all the other dates um uh, does that work for everyone sure yeah. perfect okay supervisor is that fine yeah that works for me okay okay uh, this is Paul. can can i make a, a comment i didn't get to uh, comment on one item that uh, was uh, a concern for me number 13 the um the account credits to be used for a future program when um, programs are canceled ideally it would be refunded um, a little concerned about getting the money to the right use and it's technically a, a deferred revenue for taking in money for an unknown future program unless they're committing to a program and then the, the greater concern is that this uh, credit rolls over the year end that would be even more complicated um so i don't know laurie if if you can encourage refunds or just do refunds i didn't know we were yeah we taking... had the reason we did this is because when i do the bank rec at the end of the month and i write a check we're zeroing down the bank account so i was fearful that once i did all these refunds there wasn't going to be enough money in the account there were only a handful of people that did want credit so we julie's been refunding everybody's credit card okay well i guess it'd be best if you can commit them to a program or eventually oh, it's going to be one of our programs for the year it wouldn't be okay. and, and ideally the summer program or fall soccer okay yeah okay and the last comment i had was um i see the, the on the safe the pool safety plan just wanted to uh bring it to your attention that i do not believe we've ever established our um, sanitization policy uh, regarding the splash pad. So that still is an open issue as far as I know that the insurance re requested. Uh, okay, the pool safety plan that I'm doing just pertains to the um No, the I know, I, but it's along, yeah. it's along the same lines. Uh, we also need that sanitation uh, program that they requested. Just wanna highlight that. Okay, and I wanted to also touch base with you offline that um, when I do submit this safety plan, I wanted to go over with you the issue we had last year with the uh, head lifeguards and how we had to make an adjustment to the safety plan. So before I submit it, um, I was gonna send it to you so you could review it and let me know if I have everything covered. Okay, that's fine, thanks. Okay. If I could jump in real quick, Paul, uh, the best guess. I, didn't we uh, discuss the sanitation plan in public works? And I remember there being some some sort of pushback about. The I don't know why that would. I don't I, know why that would be, but um, you I know, it's why. I thought that it was determined that um, from the manufacturer that we didn't need that it's not recycled water. It's not. That's not the issue. It's about fungal right. and viral so the that are, distinction was, it's not that you, right that you made you that know. it wasn't about the water it was actually about the equipment correct like it's the about the, the pad surfaces itself. it's about the surfaces it's not about the water was um an exception that allowed us to not have filtration but this is about the actual right. roots of contact on this the surface of the of all the equipment yep, yep. got it and that makes sense to me too um whose committee is going to solve this issue because i know we did talk about it public works 
I don't know if well, it started there was because it was a it was a public work project. So I, you know, this this issue arose very early while it was a public work project, and I brought it up. But now it's really no longer a public works project. It's a recreation program. So, or, Paul, uh, you know, Paul, Paul, could you at least so I could get up to speed? Can you send me whatever it is that needs to be done? What the requirements are, and then sure. I can okay. Um, I can work with uh, the supervisor and the committee to address whatever needs to be addressed. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to bring not lose sight of that because it will, you know, that'll yeah. be opening along with the pool and it'll be the same issue. Yeah. And certainly with what's right. going on now, we want to, <laughs> it's even more important. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So, so, yeah, I was completely unaware of it. So, yeah, if you could send that to me, that would be great. Yep. Thank you. Along with that, if that is long ended up coming out of public works and going to uh, this committee, uh, there has never been a uh, sign with the rules to the pool. So that's also something I know Matt was trying to get some wording from other parks, but um, we definitely have to do something collaboratively uh, with Matt and what he has found and signage will have to be posted there. Um, it never reached that point. Last is year we had the, temporary. Ray, are you talking about at the splash pad or at the pool or both? Splash pad. We we did additional signs at the pool last year. Uh, that was required uh, for the inspection. Uh, the splash pad. We did temporary signage last year uh, because of the you know how late it opened up. But we definitely have to establish uh, rules and uh, conduct to be posted down there on a permanent board at the splash pad. Uh, just something that was in the works that uh, never came uh, fully through. So that just, what, whatever committee this has fallen in, um, that needs to be addressed along with what Paul brought up. Okay, maybe you and, and I and uh, Lori can put our heads together and come up with something um, on the, you know, on the signage or whatever. Uh, Laura, are you available? Definitely. Okay. Yep. I know. I know Matt Yetto had some uh, done some work on it. It, it may be uh, that it just wasn't, just didn't make it to the printing board yet. But I, I know Matt has some information on it. All right. You want to ask him about that then? I, I sure will. I'll follow up with Matt. All right. Thanks, Ray. Yep. All right. Anything else? Hi, Taylor. <laughs> Hi Taylor. Hi Taylor. <laughs> How are you, sweet girl? I know. I don't know if we have to add her to the minutes that she's present. <laughs> <laughs> well, um. Um, all right. Well, I think we're done then. Uh, thanks everybody for their time. Everybody be well. <laughs> you too, Taylor. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Oh, Bye. Jessica, can you confirm that Bill Lawrence is going to upload this to YouTube afterwards? Yeah, Bill, are you still with us? Yes, I, I am. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yes, All right. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank Bye. you. Bye, Bye now. Bye-bye. Oh, Taylor's swollen. Here's your spotlight. <laughs> hey, Ray. <laughs>